let's say you're climbing a mountain and you keep climbing and climbing and climbing, but it's not till you look down like, holy crap, how did I get this far? And you may start doubting yourself, like, do I have what it takes to keep going further? You may get in your head like, I hope I don't fall. And that's kind of like how I felt. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ignite the World podcast. This is episode number 29, Keep the Faith Alive. I am your host, Jamie Dottie Garza, and thank you for tuning in. And let's get straight into it. Keeping the faith. Woohoo! This week has been a week. Now, I'm blessed reflecting back upon this week, but one of the things I, I, that happened or my intent was in creating this podcast was to relate to people you know oftentimes on social media we only see the highlight reel we only see the goods we never really see the quote-unquote bads or hear about it and that's one of the biggest things like that discouraged me because I know someone out there that I admire and aspire to was 34 years old at one point and it's like okay I always want to soak up game and just be able to have empathy and connect with someone who may be going through similarities and things I'm going through right now. And oftentimes, of course, we don't hear or see a lot of people putting their quote unquote downfalls or their roadblocks on the internet. Or when we do, it's like 10 years past. So I wanted to chime in and create this podcast and let you know I feel you because this week has been an immense test on my faith. A lot of things didn't go the way I planned. And of course, I had to pray on it even more and understand that God's timing is better than my own timing. And I wanted to make this podcast to relate to everyone out there who may be going through the same thing because, yo, real talk, it's real out here. It can be tough out here. And I want everyone to know who's listening that I feel you. I go through it too. Me and my wife go through the motions of doubt creeping in, just the enemy. And, you know, one thing about the enemy, it's not the devil or the enemy doesn't have like red face and horns all the time. It could be camouflage because the enemy is a counterfeit. The enemy and those traits, they confuse you. They make you have doubt. They get in your head and try to take you out your spot. And those are the prayers and reflections I had to have this week. And I want to just be vulnerable in this podcast. That's one of the reasons why I created this, because I know there's others out there who are going through the same thing. And I want to let you know that I'm a walking testament. This is, this is the Holy Spirit guided me in creating this video and let you know that I keep the faith alive. One of the big things this week I share with my wife and I want to share with you guys is I gave, it's almost like a metaphor. You know, when you're, let's say you're climbing a mountain and you keep climbing and climbing and climbing, but it's not till you look down like, holy crap, how did I get this far? And you may start doubting yourself, like, do I have what it takes to keep going further? You may get in your head, like, I hope I don't fall. There may be all these things, right? And that's kind of like how I felt, you know, on this journey of being set apart, on this journey of being chosen, on this journey of fatherhood, on this journey of entrepreneurship, on this journey of just being the best version of myself I could possibly be. Oftentimes, I don't see any I don't see what I'm in the moment I'm going step by step I don't look back I don't look down but sometimes when things react things happen in this world and it's just worldly things it's not the definition of what is I get in my head like and I look down like dang is this really worth it am I really on the right path is this really what I'm supposed to be doing and it's a, it's a slippery slope after that. That ain't nothing but the enemy. It's trying to take me out my spot and what's destined for me. It's almost like in the Bible, I remember when Peter was walking on water 
And Jesus was guiding him like, come on, come on, come on. And then Peter started getting his head when he was walking like, this water is deep. What if I fall? What if I drown? Everything's happened all this chaos. He began sinking. And you can't do that. You got to trust. And you got to keep that faith ignited. And that was the biggest, one of the biggest things this week, keeping that faith ignited. Some of the things that got me in my head, there were two things. One, being a parent, but I'm also a stepfather. I stepped in. I'm used to, I grew up in a stepfather household for my teenage years going into adulthood. And I've been around it all of my life. I've seen it. And I'm a big advocate on being on those out there, on the men out there stepping in and filling the role of a male leader. I really, truly believe our children need that more than ever now. But I'm in a wild situation because not only am I just stepping in, but I have to fill a role as a father because my oldest, who's 13, going on 14, he lost his father a few years ago, then going on five years. So it's no longer me just stepping in. It's me having to step, step in and discipline him. But sometimes, you know, there's boundaries. You know, I can't go all in because I know I'm not his blood. And sometimes, you know, mom is looking out for him. And of course, that's what a mother does but I can't talk to him like I would or discipline my child who's six, but I want to because I want him to be the best version, the best male he can be. And it's like this extra, extra weight on me because I know if his father was still alive, he would want to craft the best young man who is disciplined, who is the best he can be for this world. Because in fact, the reality is in five years, he's going to be a full grown man at 18. I'm supposed to teach him how to drive at 16. I want him to have the steps properly and give him the game. And again, you know, with those reflections, there's this enemy creeping in, it made me doubt like, am I really a good father? Am I really good to be in this role? I, you know, I want the absolute best for him. I told him I'm making this podcast too. We had a long discussion a few days ago and we spoke about it. I was like, I'm going to talk about this on a podcast as I go through it. That's one of the things that happened this week. I mean, you just got to keep the faith alive and pray, not only for yourself, but pray for others around you. And most importantly, look around you. Because once you pray, God's going to open up things. He's going to make you see things. For example, I was walking the dog out and literally one of my neighbors, she got a package and it said, keep the faith. It was like, it was like tape around the box that keep the faith. And these are signs throughout my day. I was, I was at Wawa pumping gas and a license plate said, keep faith. I'm like, well, it, it's, it, clues are everywhere if you look for them and you're aware of them. Another, another set back a doubt that trickled in this week was the fact that, you know, I had some certain deals in my businesses that I thought were a green light. And for whatever reasons between the wedding business and some of the proposals I sent out on the business side of things, they didn't go through. And of course it was a bummer because, you know, you're thinking everything's good. You speak to them, everything's a go for, for whatever reason I had few brides, two brides back out. And I understand the economy is a little rough. You know, it definitely is. You know, like weddings, they keep, that's, that's an industry that costs. So I understood that. And a business proposal I had, we were supposed to move forward and we didn't. And it kind of bummed me out. One, because I, I love serving. But two, I took it personal because, hey, I got a family to feed. You know, I'm, I'm like everybody else. But it's not just me. I got a wife, I got three kids, I got a dog. It's a lot on my shoulders as a man. Being the one who provides, being the head of the table is a lot of responsibility that comes with this role. There's a lot I put on myself and, you know, I got humbled quick and, you know, rea reality was just hitting me like, dang, like, it was kind of like, again, like that Peter thing. 
when you're walking in that line. If you look down or like that mountain analogy I just made earlier, if you look down, you might trip out and you might doubt yourself, but you got to keep moving forward and keep trusting and leaning on Jesus, which I did. And shout out to my wife for hearing me out and it's getting me back on track. And, you know, sometimes in create content like this, like even some of my friends, I love my best friends, but they can't relate to this. You know, they don't have kids yet. One of them is married, but it's, and then the older, older people I admire who are older than me, you know, they might be in their forties. So it's a lot different now when they're in their forties when they were in their thirties. But it's often like, and no one, I'm here right now, there's only one person I can go to. And that's the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I continue to do so. And I, I tell you what, like, I fasted. I always fast, but I fasted more intently. I had less distraction this week on my phone. And I read more in my Bible. And I made more prayers intentful. And... I really focus on the present moment and that's what helped me. And I feel so much better just knowing that, Hey, guess what, buddy, you can have expectations, but nothing's in my control. And I really truly believe God is molding me for something way bigger that I can't see right now. And I was just taking a reflection back in my life from like 10 years. And even when I was growing up that everything has been for the best bet everything even the things that i thought that were gonna absolutely destroy me that I wouldn't even be here today speaking in front of you guys it happened for the better and i want to share this video for everybody let you know that keep the faith ignite that faith and keep it no matter what you're going through i know it's it's rough out here we're in a recession Prices just keep, the inflation just keeps going up and up and up. You might have kids like me. You might be a man out there who's everything's on their shoulders and you have to stay showing up, providing. School might be coming up. You might got to get the kids' school clothes, supplies. I understand. But just like how the birds and animals on this world, they don't know how to work. They don't clock in anywhere. They trust. God provides. They eat. It's the same faith that we got to have. And they say, you know, my wife always used to say, have faith of a mustard seed. She used to tell me that often years ago. And it's so true. And you just got to keep that faith alive and just trust. Um, before I clear on out, I read the book of Daniel. Well, book of Daniel, and I read about Abraham in the Bible. Abraham, he had to trust. He had a family. No kids yet. You know, he was with his wife, his uncles, and his father. And he just trusted God every time he heard, like, to move, you know, go to this land. He just trusted. I'm like, that's a man of faith. You, <laughs> and you got to tell your family that and believe in that because you've heard it from God. And eventually he was like, hey, I don't even have kin or sons to inherit the land. And God told him, you will. Your kids, kids, your kids, kids, kids. And eventually, in his 30s, his wife Sarah, that's what happened when they conceived Isaac. Just trust in God. <laughs> You're going, going from one place to another, hometown to a different spot in the country, just keep on exploring and just being okay with that. That was my first reading I read earlier in the week. And then this confirmation reading Daniel in the Bible and his immense faith in that lion's den when he was about to get eaten by a lion because he didn't want to worship any false idols. He had one superior, God, the Most High, and he stood on that boldly, like a lion, and was unscathed. So those are the stories that hit home with me. Again, there's no coincidences in this world. No such thing. It's all meant. And the clues are out there. I know I'm loved. I know I am on my purpose. I know I got confirmation this week.
from the great people I've been able to connect with, just seeing how much of an impact my videos make on them, making them a better person, getting their message out to the relationships in my community, pushing me and striving me and just keeping me going. To my family, uplifting me here each and every day, my kids, telling, I love you, daddy. That's what keeps me going. And I realize this is way bigger than just me. It's way bigger than just me. Too much is given, much is required. I ask for all this. And you might be feeling like me too out there. I just want to let you know you're not alone. And I want to let you know that you can be a little bit more peaceful, more peaceful. You give it to God. Lean on Jesus. Pray some. And keep the faith ignited. That's all I got for you this week. Hopefully it motivates your week. Stay blessed by the best. And remember, we are all like sticks of dynamite. The power's on the inside, but nothing happens until the fuse gets lit. Ignite the world.